wrestling fans, and welcome back to 10 Count. I'm Steve Fall, but on today's edition, I am talking to the greatest villain or baby face, in your opinion, ever. It's Jake the Snake Roberts. How are you doing today? I'm doing great, man. I'm That's absolutely great. wonderful. That is amazing. You know, and a few weeks ago, I was watching this documentary on A&E about your life, and I watched yeah. a couple documentaries about you already, and, and books and about you, about your life. How did you think that A&E pulled off your story? Did you like it? I was very happy with it. Very happy. Good to hear, because sometimes, you know, when you see, obviously, your life being put out there for yeah. the rest of the world to see, they might paint a picture that yeah. you're not satisfied with, but you were satisfied. Very satisfied. Very good. Yeah. yeah I, well, they did an ex excellent job. Yeah. Because I, I know everyone knows about your wrestling career, probably back and yeah. forth, but your your home life, yeah. growing up, all of yeah. that, that must be a heavy toll to constantly have to talk about. Well, it's it's not. It's, it's more of therapy for me. Good. You know, and uh, you know, it's back... The trouble was whenever I was trying to keep everything a secret. Mm. And uh, that's when it caused me problems because I'd get just so down about it and so angry about it that I would turn to doing drugs or alcohol. Right. You know, and uh, I had to get that stuff out and talk about it and get rid of it. And uh, now I'm good with it. Because your relationship with DDP and Scott Hall, I feel like, really was the beginning of the rebirth of Jake the Snake Roberts. Definitely. What was your relationship like with both of those men going through such tough times? Because at the same time, you want help but don't want help, want help but don't mm -hmm. want help. What was that situation like? Well, with DDP, he nearly he drove me crazy, but he was doing it for, with love. <laughs> right. You know, he can be uh, he can be in your face a little bit too much at times. Scott Hall was a different thing. Scott, he was going through the same thing I was going through, so there wasn't a whole lot there. Right. But hand in hand, going through this together with Scott a little bit, I think might have brought you closer together? Yeah, oh, I, definitely. Definitely. Yeah. Yeah. And re re recently, um, unfortunately, it's been a year since Scott yeah. Hall passed away. And, yeah. you know, what... What are the stories beyond what we know of the, the rehab situations? Uh, any fun Scott Hall stories that don't involve that situation? Just on the road, having a good time. Oh, Scott was, he was fun, man. He was a good guy. You know, yeah. I, I wasn't around Scott much on the road. So I don't really have anything there. Yeah, you came back in, in the WWE around January of 96 uh, to yeah, join the Royal Rumble. I didn't travel with him, so... Right, 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 right of course. And mm. you competed on eight WrestleManias, and I think one of the matches always gets brought up. Not the time you made Wells puke in the ring at WrestleMania 2, but the fact that your blindfold match with Rick the Model Martell at WrestleMania 7, this is put on a list, two different lists. Some people love this match, some people don't like this match. I yeah. particularly love it. It involves the audience a lot more than a normal type match because you kind of you got to point and figure out where someone is. What's your perspective going into this match? Because this is a different ball game. Well, fortunately for me, I've been in a blindfold contest before. I was in a blindfold battle royal. <laughs> oh, my God. Which was pretty wild. You know, you wound up beating the shit out of people you don't want to beat up, man. You lose <laughs> some friends real quick. <laughs> but, uh, you know, the, the, the whole thing with the blindfold was just it was genius. You know, it really was. And then to go out there and get the fans to participate. I know I have fans all the time come to me and say, man, I was screaming so loud trying to tell you where he was at. I'm like, well, where were you at? Well, I was in Illinois. I go, God damn, I couldn't hear you in Illinois, man. I'm sorry. Yeah, but I screamed so much I got hoarse, you know, from their participation at home. And you can't ask for anything more. True. Really can't, man. So uh, I know it. It was the easiest money I ever made. <laughs> yeah. D doing this. Yeah. And then, and then oh, is he over there? Oh, yeah. oh you, you creep on yeah. over. My, fing my finger did get sore hanging it out there like that. You know? I know. I hope your finger got a good payday oh, that yeah. day. Oh, yeah. Oh, it did. I know. That's amazing to hear because you did wrestle a million dollar man at WrestleMania, Andre the Giant. Now, what yeah. was I've talked to many wrestlers and they either have a, a beautiful relationship with Andre or a yeah. terrible relationship with Andre. One of the two. Where did you land? Great one. Great one. Good. Yes. Yes. Good. We, he played, didn't... 
we played we played uh, cribbage nightly. He right. loved to play cards, and uh, I love to play cards too. We played cribbage nearly every night. Good. Good, because I, I, you know, I've heard stories of him just sitting on people and not getting off them, and clearly he yeah. was being kind to you in the ring. Yeah, he was. He he got me a few times, but you know, <laughs> just to let me know he was there. <laughs> he sat on me one time for about, I guess, about a minute, and just farted the longest <laughs> fart ever. It was like <laughs> 30, 40 seconds of just. <laughs> It was, I, I couldn't believe it. And it was like, he's not really farting. Oh, God, he is, you know? And <laughs> my skin was vibrating that his ass was right there. And it's like, holy shit. Oh, lucky, no. You know, lucky for me, it didn't smell like it sounded. <laughs> I was going to say, it sounded like shit, man. Yeah, you know, I have babies, and, you know, when, oh, when it farts, yeah. you're like, is it a fart or is it a shark? Yeah. And luckily, yeah. that day that you're talking about, just a fart. Not a, a shark. Not a shark. Yeah. <laughs> you don't want Absolutely. that landed on you from Andre the Giant. Uh, he's a giant. So I am imagine they're giant-sized oh, yeah. turds, too. So. Oh, yeah. I imagine. I imagine. I don't want to imagine. No, but, I, I but, I, but I can, but I don't want to. Yeah, I'm going to keep that visual out. Yeah. And I think it's going to creep into my brain later when oh, I go yeah, to sleep in, in the nightmares. And I'm going to blame you, Jake, for this Good. situation. <laughs> Good. This turds for you. Thanks, Jake. I really appreciate no that. Problem. You're you're hey, a kind I, man. Still, I'll shit day. for anybody. <laughs> you know, my first wrestling event was the Boston Garden, 1992. The main event was supposed to be the Macho Man versus Yuna Steel Cage. And now I'm a uh, I'm very young, so I don't know what's going the inner workings of wrestling. And I just yeah. got done watching WrestleMania Eight, you versus Undertaker. And out of mm. nowhere, they announced like Jake the Snake Roberts will not be here because he is afraid of the Macho Man. And I'm, uh, as a little kid, I'm thinking, like, where is he? And, like, I'm looking underneath my seat, thinking you're underneath my seat, like, hiding, like, you know, imaginations. Yeah. But it turns out, you know, you eventually did leave the WWE after WrestleMania yeah. 8. And I, the story is, and I want to make sure this is clear, the story is Pat Patterson was leaving, and you wanted to be put in the position of creative. You wanted to be involved backstage yeah. more than been in the ring. Were there promises given to you that were not kept? Yes, absolutely. This had promised me that position. Uh, long before, you know, several years before, that that would be my spot. And uh, so when it happened, I'm like, okay, I'm ready, man. And uh, the story was, well, out of respect for Pat, we're not going to fill that position. Bullshit. Pat never left. <laughs> he was still there. He right. just wasn't shown on TV. Interesting, because, you know, there's a lot of stories that involve Pat Patterson over the years, even Vince yeah. McMahon, where there's controversies surrounding their names. And I think for TV reasons, let's pretend he's not on TV, so he doesn't actually work here. Right. But, but you're being told one story, but yet on the audience is being told another. Yeah. It, it's very daunting to think that someone like you of your stature, even at the time, even today, the world is promised something and this promise is not kept. Is that a common thing you think in wrestling where promises are given and then they're just oh, ripped God, away? Yeah. God, yeah. Yeah, they dangle that carrot out in front of you a lot. Why do you think that is? To get you to do what they want because you to do? They can. Because they can. You know, and uh, I don't need any bullshit, you know. Just keep your word with me. I'll do everything I can, man. And then some. Right. You know, I'll deliver. I will right. deliver. You know, and I always yeah. have. So for him not to deliver on that one, it was huge with me. You know, it was bad enough that I got screwed over the Hogan thing. I couldn't wrestle Hogan because the crowd was split. Not my fault they don't like Hogan. <laughs> you know, it's not my fault they're cheering for me. You know, let's get it out there and go. And we were selling out. We only we only wrestled twice, and both of them were sellouts. So what the hell's the problem? And this is when this is in '91 when you were a heel, correct? Right. 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 It was before that, actually. OK, because I in, in this, you know, in the summer of 91, you you turn a different yeah. page there where you are assisting the ultimate warrior to join the dark side right. to take on Undertaker. And eventually you were tricking warrior into all these little games. And eventually yeah. you did turn. And I did hear a story when you were on Team Hogan at Survivor Series and Hogan's like, I want to hold the snake. I want to be part of the snake because yeah. Damien was over. He was he oh, that, yeah. you could have given the world title to Damien and people would have been like, I'm down for this. Like, 
You know, let's yeah. do this. Damien versus sure. Frankie. Koku Beware's bird. Let's do this. WrestleMania. Yeah, I'm ready. <laughs> um, so the perspective of Hogan, I think, I think, you know, mm. being jealous of you and the snake leads into mm. a perspective of not giving you opportunities. And that's something in wrestling we always see, it feels like, where a wrestler is on the way up, but the wrestler who is up here is like figuring out how to keep this person down because they right. don't want their spot taken. Is that the perspective right. you had with Hogan? No, I don't think so. Uh, this was actually in 88, I believe. Oh, even earlier. Yeah, yeah, before I turned babyface the first time. Okay. This was right after the steamboat incident stuff. Oh, we did a, oh yeah. We did a couple of things. We did some vignettes and stuff out in Phoenix. And it looked like we were going to go with it. And whenever I'd, I DDT'd Hogan on the, on the snake pit, I had the snake pit going yep. and left him laying and came to the back and Vince is like, just stand right here and wait till these people come up and start cheering for Hogan. They'll chant his name, blah, 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 blah. You guys are going to make so much money. I'm waiting. And I'm waiting. And I'm waiting. And then the people started chanting, DDT, DDT. That was the end of it. Wow. That was the end of it. Vince said, we're pulling the plug on this shit. Interesting. I, I know other wrestlers had that same kind of situation where they were in certain towns. Dino Bravo is a good example of he was supposed to fight Hogan in, I believe, Canada at some some location. And they Hogan said, no, 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 we're not going to do this because we're in Dino Bravo's backyard. They're going to cheer Dino. That hurts Hogan. But in reality, the Internet wasn't even around. So like, no. how, how would the rest of the world know that people are chanting DDT exactly. in, in, in this one town or these two towns? Exactly. Exactly my point, man. Yeah, I just didn't want it at all. Interesting. Maybe not, not upsetting the Golden Goose at the time, possibly. Uh, it, they said it, you know, it hurt their marketing. Well, make more stuff on me then. <laughs> right. Who, who? Yeah. Who? Who hurts? Who's marketing? The WWF, right? Right. Or Hulk Hogan's? Both. It sounds like, you know, when you're chumming out Hulk Hogan uh, workout systems and tank tops and shirts and headbands and teddy bears, well, why don't do the same thing for Jake the Snake? They, you had a, mm -hmm. a little burlap sack bag that came with a rubber snake that it was yeah. so hard to find. But when you found it, it was like, oh, my God. You know? yeah. And, uh, you know, I had that as a kid, too. So there, there's many aspects around the situation that involves you and Hogan, because I always heard that Survivor Series story where he wanted to grab the snake and hold it with you. And there was some sort of like miscommunication of like, no, 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 this is my gimmick. This is my yeah. snake. Well, definitely. You're not, you're not going to steal not, what I'm, I'm not doing. Let, I'm not going to let him hold the snake. Right. No right. way in hell. In fact, the story behind the scenes was... Uh, Vincent came to me and asked me if I could get a bigger snake because he wanted all four of us to hold it. Mm. He wanted Hogan Demolition. to hold the head, me behind Hogan, and then Demolition behind me. And he wanted us to walk to the ring, all four of us carrying a huge snake. Well, I thought to myself, this screws my gimmick. Right. So I said, okay, I got to do what the boss said, get a bigger snake. He didn't say how big, though, did he? <laughs> so I got a bigger snake. I bought. I got a 28-foot anaconda that weighed about close to 400 pounds. You know, his head was ginormous. He could have swallowed one of us. That's how big he was. And when that thing came out, Vince went, oh, my God, hell no. Get it out of here. Get it out of here. Well, Vince, I did what she asked. Yeah. Wow. Hey, yeah, man, you got to be more specific. If you're going to screw with someone's cash, you better be more that's specific. Right. I think you want this snake. That's interesting. I, I always heard that Survivor Series story, and that's always a very weird perspective because when you're on top, you want to stay on top. But, you know, th yeah. there's always a list. Of wrestlers people put together uh and you're always on it with million dollar man even mr perfect wrestlers who never won the world title right. but then the argument turns into well they're like well they didn't need it and i've heard that on a podcast they don't yeah. need it um what they don't need more money in their pockets what they don't need more merchandise sales what do you mean yeah. they don't need it what are you talking right. about like how how do you feel about that perspective when people are like oh well jake was so popular he didn't need the world title well hulk hogan was so popular too why did he need the, the championship exactly it's all like, bullshit. 
Thank you. I just want to clarify that you believe yeah. it also that it is bullshit because as a Jason Snake fan and still a supporter of you still to this day, it's crazy to think would be like, well, they didn't need the belt. Yeah. Okay. I, okay. I'm not a chump. Right. <laughs> like, I'm not a chump, man. I, I know what I'm doing out there. Yeah. Good to hear. Good to hear. And, and you did bring up the snake pit. And I know in other interviews you have suggested that the honky tonk man hitting you with a not yeah. gimmick guitar, a real guitar yeah. in the in the back of the head hurt your neck. And that set yeah. off a chain of events that set you down the path you were on. Is, is yeah, this yeah. true? Yes, it is. Totally. So, 100 percent. Now, what was the reasoning? Was there a gimmick guitar somewhere and he grabbed the wrong one? No, there wasn't one. There wasn't they, one. They sent somebody out to get one, and uh, the guy came back with a real goddamn guitar. The thing was a, it was a half-inch thick. Mm. Plus, it had fiberglass on top of that. It was, a, you know, it was a $500 guitar. And it was so thick that in the back, they tried to carve notches in the back so it would break but they didn't carve enough and the other thing is he shouldn't have hit me in the head he should have hit me across the back yes the head can't take that he came from an angle so it just boom it blasted me down which blew out my c6 and blew out my c7 disc and unfortunately i'm hard-headed i didn't immediately go for doctor help no, I, I wanted to keep going. I wanted to keep going. And that's where I made my mistake by keeping going because, uh, you know, you start taking pills that'll get rid of the pain. And the next thing you know, you're, you're kind of liking that feeling. Right. And then you just keep going. And uh, for two years, I wrestled with that uh, to the point that I, I couldn't lift my left arm. That's how bad the, the atrophy and the nerve damage was. Wow. So when I fi finally finally Vince checked me out and seen how bad it was and uh you know he called me out on it because uh he seen what I was doing in the ring. I was constantly in every match to begin the match, I would have the guy attack my left arm and hurt it so I couldn't lift it the rest of the match. I was selling it. Yeah. You know, I couldn't lift it anyway. <laughs> so that was that. And wow. he, called, he called me out on it, and I was unable to lift my arm. He said, that's it, you're out. So that was 87 when you got the guitar shot. So in yeah. 89, he yeah. comes to 89. you and goes, hey, man, you're you're clearly hurt. Yeah, yeah. But see, as an athlete, you're afraid that if you go out, you won't ever come back. You know, you're afraid that your spot will be taken. That's just athletes thinking, you know. That's just natural. Well – you know, I don't think you ever lost your spot either, because if you go no. through time, you go through time, your storylines no. continued on again with Andre, Million Dollar Man, yeah. uh, Rick Lamar I'll tell when you had to wear that white contact in your eye. It still freaks me out to this day yeah. uh, that that right there. And again, at the time, no one understands movie magic where they're like, oh, that's that's a contact. No one thinking no one's thinking that they're like, oh, my God, the yeah. the arrogance got spray in his eye and he's he's blind and and they still made you wrestle and you had you you sold the part that you kind of were not you couldn't see on one side right. so if someone comes right. at you this way you can't see, see him it. yeah beautiful yeah i worked that, hard at that that is storytelling yeah it is that is damn good storytelling and yeah, um it is. but the greatest story i think that has ever been told by jake the snake involves a king cobra and the macho oh, man's yeah. arm and I don't think – I think until the – even on your gravestone, it's going to say, Jason Snake Roberts, man who allowed King Grover to eat <laughs> Macho Man live on TV. Because that is something that, again, in wrestling, there are moments in time where, oh, I, we can set the scenario up where I'm going to beat you up and I hit you with a car or I, you know, or I drop you, you know, on your head and, and we make it look real. Like, no, 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 no. This is like King Cobra eating Macho yeah. Man's arm. Shooting the uh, fucking shit out of it. No shit. And so I know the day of, as the story goes, you know, you, Macho Man, wanted to see if this thing was devenomized. And right. did you let this thing bite you first backstage? Yeah, he demanded it. Yeah, he said, either, either you let the snake bite you or we're going to fight right now. <laughs> I'm like, this is a bunch of bullshit. So I just pulled up my pant leg and stuck it over there and he bit my leg. And then once once he let loose, Macho was like, okay, don't take no antidotes, don't take no. 
pills, don't take no elixirs, don't take no, you know, and all this shit. And I'm like, oh, are you fucking kidding me, man? Wow. You're a, you're a psycho. Was he, it seems like lately these A&E documentaries about other wrestlers are exposing more than I think they're, than we knew. And it seems yeah. like Macho Man is crazier than a lot of people thought. And we oh, still yeah, love him was. as an in-ring wrestler. As a, yeah. as, a, as a character on TV, we love you. But we're finding yeah. out more backstage and we're like, uh, wow. this sounds a little wonky. Yeah, yeah he, was, uh, he was out there, brother. He was intense. And, you know, again, there's a really, story. Really that he, jealous. Yes. Really jealous. High and jealous. I mean, he hated the fact that Elizabeth had the fans cheering for her. Really? Oh, yeah. He couldn't stand that shit. Wow. I've seen him time and time again go off on people that ask her for an autograph. You know, she don't fucking wrestle. She doesn't need to sign shit. Yeah. I'm the wow. fucking star here. Oh, yeah. That's uh even worse than, than in, in, in one of the documentaries on A&E, they said he would lock her in rooms and not yeah. let anyone in there. Is this true? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, you know, it, it took about 30 years for all of us to discover the, the truth yeah. of what goes on more so than never. pretty heavy, man. Wow. And so you get in the ring with them, and it's it he's tied up. And you have yeah. this King Cobra, and you go to, and this thing is just eating his arm. And now, are oh, there yeah. people around you? Like, are, you can see around the ring officials. Is someone screaming at you, like, get that yes. thing off of him? Oh, yeah. They sent, they sent Roddy Piper to the ring, and they sent Miss Elizabeth to the ring. You know, Vince sent him out there. Tell him to get it off of him. I couldn't get it off of him. Right. You're, you, you see you shaking it. I'm pulling on it, shaking it. I don't want to rip his arm off. Right. So then I finally go up and I spread his mouth, you know, and get him off of it. Wow. Wow. That, again, well, that's top 10 happens. moments. That's what happens whenever you have a snake bite me. Because uh, what happened was when I got the snake out, I turned my back to Macho Man and I slapped the piss out of that snake, you know, just upside the head. Bap! Then I turned around and put it on Macho Man. <laughs> so he was one pissed off snake at the time. Oh, now were you trying to get this snake a little oh, yeah. extra aggravated? I was trying to get him a mad son of a bitch, man. Wow. And, and again, we're on TV. We're being filmed. So Macho Man can't just like unlock his arms and be like, rip yeah. it off himself. He's sell he has to keep selling he it. I, would, sell I don't it. think he's selling. He's being like, holy shit, this snake is biting my arm. Yeah, I went up to him one time during that whole thing and I'm like, Dude, you're doing a great job. You're selling. Goes, Get this motherfucker off of me. <laughs> oh, oh my. Gosh, and then on top of that, the cherry on this, you get to slap Miss Elizabeth on TV as well. Yeah, like yeah. Th that storyline doesn't just have a, a King Cobra eating someone. It has you slapping a woman on TV. And at the time in the WWF, that was not a thing. No. What was the reaction of fans? You're going from airport oh to God. airport in cars to cars. You're traveling around the world. Pissed. They were pissed. You're a fucking asshole. You know, you're a cocksucker. You're everything, you know, everything but human. <laughs> My God. And I, that's just one of the greatest storylines. And of course, yeah. at the time, the president on TV, Jack Tunney, bans reptiles from ringside. Yeah. Now, what did you feel about that situation? Because that really cut your legs off a little bit with your, your well, gimmick of Jake the it, Snake. If I would have followed it, it did, but I didn't follow it. That's true. You know, eventually, because you, so eventually after that, what was the reasoning of the announcement of, hey, we're going to, they tried to obviously curb you having a snake at ringside for no, storyline reasons. Happened. Never it happened. Never happened. Good to hear. They talked about it, but it didn't happen. Because I imagine animal rights groups, even today's world would be a lot more heavy oh, on you. Oh, God, you couldn't do it today. No. Forget about it. Oh, my no. God. If I had slapped somebody, I slapped a woman on TV. Oh, my God. Right. That's always oh, a weird yeah. perspective too, where they're like, yeah. wrestling's fake. Then you then you have like a, you slap a woman on TV, they're like, How dare they? It's real. It's like, I'm sorry, yeah. didn't you just five seconds ago say it was fake? Like Right. Right. I, I'm I'm confused. Yeah. Uh, they do confuse you, don't they? It's very weird. Wrestling is too real or too fake for people. Uh, yeah. it doesn't make any sense to me and never will. And it's uh, funny, it's funny when somebody will come up and they'll say, You know, wrestling's fake, and I'll say, You're right. And they'll go, <laughs> Well, yeah, but that one time, that one time, you and Macho Man, y'all were really mad. And, and another time is whenever an earthquake set on your snake, you were pissed off. Yeah. No, I just did a good job that day. That's all. That was a little weird, too, was uh, uh, watching 
I remember and Bruce Pritchard on his podcast said they put like what like ground up beef inside of a bag while Earthquake yeah, sat on ground, it. Ground up beef in a pantyhose. Yuck. That was and, my idea. And they made quick burgers. They made yeah. burgers out of it yeah, and would, ate them I on would, TV. I wouldn't have ate one myself. <laughs> <laughs> and that and that's crazy. Imagine in today's world, someone's like, hey, so the storyline is he sits and kills a snake. Uh-huh. And then what hits next? He's going to make them into burgers. Yeah. And he's going to eat them on TV. I'm sorry. What are we doing here? Yeah. Yeah. You couldn't do that today, man. No, no, you couldn't. But that King Cobra storyline is something you'll never, ever forget. Though, you know, in today's world, you are involved with AEW. But for 18 months, about 19, maybe now even 20, you were off TV because you had a really bad case of COVID and you had to be on oxygen. Yeah, I did. Now, I had COVID twice. The first oh, time it just felt times. like a like a small cough. The, yeah, the, the second time I had it, I was like, I was out. Holy shit. Yeah, that's what happened to me. So what was that 18 months, you know, like being at home oh, trying to get back? It sucked, man. You know, I'm still trying to carry on. You know, I'm having to use the machine. But I was wanting to carry on with it. But they didn't They didn't want me to go out to the ring with that. With an oxygen that's, tank? That was the whole thing. Yeah, that was the whole thing. Hmm. And uh, I respect them for that. It's not like they... Uh, shit canned me and told me to take a hike. Uh, they still took care of me, and uh, AEW is just wonderful to work for. Yeah. They really, really are, you know, and uh, Tony Khan is one of the best men I've ever met. Wow. And one of the smartest men I've ever met. Mm. He knows more about wrestling than I do. And I know a lot. <laughs> I'd I imagine you know you know a lot. Yeah, uh, you yeah, saying Tony Khan knows more is very yes, uh, he does. He knows more impressive. about me than I do. <laughs> he does, man. Wow. And, and and then you're involved with Lance Archer as well on TV, but yeah. yet Lance Archer, I interviewed him last year and I kind of asked him, like, you know, it feels like you're a break. You know, grab the hammer and break the glass in case of an emergency situation. Like it feels like Lance yeah. Archer always gets brought in when they need something yeah. because someone else is hurt or there's something going on. Why do you feel like Lance Archer is not in the mix all the time? I don't know, man. And you know, I, I can't figure it out. It's not my place to figure it out. You know, Tony's got this spot for him. And uh, basically he's being used to uh enhance other people. And that's okay. Yeah. But uh yeah, we'd like to be on TV more, no doubt. Yeah, and then like it felt like you know he has connection to New Japan as well, and then yeah. you go back to Forbidden Door last year, and again it just felt like they were he would be brought in randomly for dynamites to connect the pieces to New Japan, but not using the big right. grand scheme at Forbidden you know? Door, and the second one's coming up as well. And I imagine in my brain, you know, Lance Archer is probably cooking up ideas trying to get on that card. So I hope you and Lance can make it to that card. But while you're mm -hmm. not on, well, you're not on TV though. What are you doing? Are you there every Wednesday backstage assisting? No, I'm not. No, uh, no I'm not. No, right now, uh, what I do is um, once a month we go to Orlando to do dark. And I go down there and I get with the guys and I help them do interviews. Okay. Trying to teach them a better way to do their interviews, which I know how to do interviews. So yeah. It's easy for me, but these guys are, you know, they're not used to it. They, they don't get it yet. But I'm there to help them, and uh, I enjoy doing it. I'm happy to do it, and uh, I hope to continue to do it. Yeah, it feels like you're the king of promos, the king yeah. of talking. Have you always been a, a really well-spoken person? Yeah. yeah. Where did you get that from? Schooling? No, nah, I don't know about that. <laughs> <laughs> like It just feels like every time you spoke, you were a, a poet. Yeah. Well, I, I used a lot of a lot of tricks, you know. I, I stole a lot of a lot of my lines from music, mm -hmm. or from TV shows or movies, but a lot from music, you know. And uh, I just played with it, you know. You know, put it into rhymes and put it into put it into things that people have heard before. Right. Because if they've heard it before and I say it, they're automatically agreeing with me because they've heard it before. And it just clicks something in their brain. They don't even know what's happening. Yeah. The, the, you know, you saying trust me over and over again always got me good too because you're thinking, like, this bad guy really wants me to trust him. 
I don't think I want to trust him, but he keeps saying it. Yeah. I feel like I should. So, so making you think about it, see? <laughs> yeah, yeah. The, the, again, Anytime and, you make a fan think about something, you're doing your job. And I hope that you're allowing or putting forth your your knowledge towards the AEW dark roster there because again Absolutely. they they're putting forth great work but yet you bring up a really good point about you know there's a character development versus yeah. you could be a great wrestler but what's what why who are you why are you yeah. here if you had to yeah. tell me in one sentence who you are you'd be like oh I'm a good wrestler well okay that's great but who are you who exactly. are it's so that's I, I, where I they get lost a lot of people coming up to you and just asking for advice constantly. Yeah, a few, quite a few. Just a few? I hope. Yeah, I hope more than a few. few. Quite a few. Good because yeah. uh, if they, if you have Jake the Snake at your disposal to talk to about anything involving wrestling, promos, character yeah. development, you're the man. You know, Jake the Snake Roberts. Like that. Yeah. Simple. You know, it's simple it stuff. It is. Um. Though I remember as a kid in in like I think it was like '99, there was. Uh, wrestling was huge. It was like a this giant boom. And out of nowhere, this this movie we thought was called Beyond the Mat was appearing in theaters. Yeah, and as a child, bullshit. I went, I was like, oh my God, wrestling, yay, in theaters. Woo! I went and I'm like, what the hell is this? Yeah, it was, uh, this, this, I, really really got, I really got shafted there. Right, what what was the pitch to you? Because what came out was not what I thought was happening. Well, it was supposed to be on TV, not in the movie. And it was supposed to be to help people with addiction. Mm -hmm. But they turned it all around. The magic of television and really shafted me, shoved it right up my ass. So did you see the final product and then go, what the hell, man? Or did you see it before I, it aired? No, I heard it. My daughter told me what they had done and I never went to see it. You've never seen it? Nope. Wow. And I never will. Smart because that what they said and did is just yeah, insulting. Yeah, yeah, it was uh, way over the top. And uh, I did call the guy up and offer to come mow his yard for him and take his kids to school and put oil on his wife's back while she lays at the pool. <laughs> yeah, what? I'm I'm moving in next door to you, motherfucker. Oh my. <laughs> I I wonder he was like, oh my. Uh, yeah, he was. He shit himself. I imagine if Jake Stick calls he's, me up. He still he still hides. So yeah, you have not bumped into him. He has not bumped no, into you. Oh God, no, man. He he's hiding somewhere. I imagine. Uh, yeah, because again, beyond the mat, when again it's the boom, wrestling is like on fire. It's everywhere. Oh, Money's yeah. being made. It's crazy. And so suddenly you think, oh my God, there's a wrestling movie. About about ECW and Jake the Snake Roberts and Mankind, and you watch each kind of portion of it, and a lot of it is positive for one person and then negative for the rest. Yeah, yeah. And you land in that negative category, unfortunately. Yeah. Man, I, I'm they cut me up good, man. Yeah, I'm. Ha I, you know, I'm very happy you haven't seen it because again, it's one of those things where you watch it, and you're like, why would you do this to so many people's heroes? Yeah. Like yeah. you, re you're really trying to make money off of the back yeah. of of the hard That's work that he put did. forth. That's what they did. Bro. Did you get paid for that or no? Not a nickel. Not a nickel. Not a nickel. Because you were told it's supposed to help people. Yeah. So sold a lie and then yeah, uh, and then not a dime. Yeah. Uh, how much? Let's, how much was that house? How much, how much of that house did you get next to him? But we'll move yeah. on. But <laughs> yeah, let's move on. Um, of course. I, it was just one of those weird things, but. I be doing my comedy show. I do a comedy show, believe it or not. And I'll be doing that May 5th. Nice. In Boston. And uh, Kowloon. I love Kowloons. Okay. So that's on the 5th. Then the 6th, I'm going to Zombie Hideout in Springfield. The 7th, I'm in Hartford at the Funny Bone. The 13th, I'm in Bonkers in Orlando. And the 30th of April, I'm in the Hard Rock in Pittsburgh. Wow. You're a busy man. So I'm jumping around a little bit, but I love it, man. I love talking to the fans. I love hearing their perspectives and hearing their memories. It just makes me feel really good. So when you do these comedy shows, is there a Q&A at the end where people yeah, get to you sure. know, ask questions and, and sure. – Pretty much asked you the same as the, the King Cobra questions, the slapping Elizabeth, oh, yeah. Yeah. Hulk Hogan, Warrior. Yeah. You know, 
I imagine you get, you get a lot of repeats yeah, in a lot sure. of, <laughs> but sure. those are the memories we have of you. And uh, the, uh, that's what makes you happy. Let me do it. Yes, this is true. Yeah. And I, I, May 5th, Kyle Loon. This yeah, is a very famous place for wrestlers. If you walk yeah. in there and you see all on the walls, there's autographs from, you know, you, The Rock, Stone Cold, Hogan, War. It's it's an, an endless amount of people. So yeah. upstairs is a comedy club. So May 5th, I got to I gotta get those tickets. I got to go. Yeah, I got to see. I got to be there. I'm like, excuse me. Uh, the end. Excuse me, Jake. I have a question. Um, who was that yeah. handsome man who interviewed you a few weeks ago? Uh, yeah, there you go. Oh, oh yeah, the water boy. Oh, it was me. I remember now. <laughs> yeah, the guy with the water in his basement. Uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm like Jake. Remember when I was flooding and yeah, I was float? Yeah. I was floating. Yeah, that's me. That's me. It's Steve. How are you? That's great. And I have to say, it has been an honor and a privilege, and I'm still sad that first wrestling event I went to, they announced that you were afraid of the macho man. You couldn't be that. there. I was like, I don't know about that, but I think he's underneath my seat. No, he's not. Okay, he's not there. Yeah. But again, it's been an honor and a privilege talking to you well, today, you. and uh, I just want to say, you've done so much for the wrestling world, and hopefully we can give something back to you, and hopefully people go to your comedy shows, WrestleCon, all that good stuff. Listen to your podcast as well. Absolutely. There's there's so much happening with you. So, I've been Steve Fall. He's been Jake the Snake. Have a great day, and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Bye.